Welcome back everybody. Today we have five more ways your tractor can kill you based on mainly user comments from the previous video. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure you check that one out after finishing this one. It could save your life. I am proud to be sponsored by Bore Wheel Spacers. I have a set of two inch spacers adding four inches in width to my 1025R. If you're looking for a stability solution for your tractor, make sure you check out Bore Wheel Spacers. You can get them in aluminum or steel. They're made in America and a lifetime warranty. Hey, and if you found this video helpful, I would love to get a thumbs up from you, so hit that like button below. If you want to see more tractor videos, hit subscribe, and if you're looking for something for your tractor, maybe a front end attachment, a three point attachment, maybe even a new tractor, check out goodworkstractors.com. Before we get into the next five uh, ways a tractor can kill you, I want to go back to the last video. Uh, there were a lot of great comments. Just a, a lot of really good comments out there, but one that kind of stuck out to me uh, just recently was uh, from Dale Martin. He worked at a dealership for 25 years. So this comment from Dale Martin on the last video said, I work at an equipment dealership for over 25 years. In that time, I can think of at least two customers who were killed in rollover accidents. This is at one dealership. Both of these were older gentlemen in their 60s and 70s operating tractors on ground that they had farmed their entire life. I know of several other people seriously injured, stuff like a broken pelvis, broken legs, cracked ribs, and several more who rolled over and escaped unharmed. I'm sure there's many more that we never heard of because they were too embarrassed to tell their story. This is way more common than it should be and I've witnessed people on lawn tractors mowing banks and swales going side hill on angles I would never dream of doing. People think because they have four wheel drive it means they can go anywhere. I'm literally amazed there aren't more deaths and serious injuries. You know, and so Dale does a really good job from a different perspective, not mine. So, you know, there's all sorts of comments like that in the last video and probably will end up being comments like that in this video too. So take it seriously, even if you are on terrain you've been on your entire life, an accident can happen in the blink of an eye. Okay, I wanna to touch on one way a tractor can kill you that we covered in the last video, which is when you're hooked up to a trailer or maybe tying off to a tree and trying to pull it over or a stump uh, with your tractor. And the position of that point on your tractor where you tie it off, the height is gonna make a big difference, a life and death difference. So if I said, go ahead, hook up a chain to the back of this tractor somewhere and try to make it so that loader comes flipping over this way, you wouldn't pick a point down low to tie off to. You would probably pick up somewhere on the top of the ROPS bar or somewhere up here and try to get that to pull over and tip this way. And so maybe without even realizing why, the reason I would choose, and probably most of you would as well, uh, to tie off on the top of the ROPS bar to tip this tractor over backwards is because it's way above the pivot point, which is the axle. So if you're tied off to a trailer or a log or a stump with a chain, you don't want to be tied off on the top of your ROPS bar because if that log doesn't move and your tractor's trying to go forward, it's going to want to flip everything backwards. But if you're tied off even with the axle or below the axle on your draw bar, if you have your three point down with a, uh, a receiver on it, you keep that low to the ground even with the axle or below, it's going to be a lot safer. If you start to raise it up or tie off to somewhere up here, you're going to be a lot more likely to tip everything over backwards. Okay, so this first one, there's pretty much a warning sticker on every loader that's out there. John Deere does a really good job with that. They've got a whole pile of warning stickers right here for you, but this pertains to using your front end loader. Let's say you have the bucket on there like what we have right now, and you're lifting a round bale up with it, or maybe a big log, okay? As you start to raise higher, your bucket's gonna wanna kinda rotate back as well, and we'll post some pictures. Maybe some of you guys have seen this already, but it's worth posting again. This guy escaped with his life somehow miraculously, but he had a log, a big old log in his bucket, and obviously got it up too high this way, and it released and rolled back onto his hood and then onto the operator station, crushing the tractor steering wheel and then just basically rested on his lap. It looked like the fender saved his life. But it's pretty incredible how lucky this guy was to walk away pretty much unharmed from what it sounds like in the, in the post that I saw. However, I would venture a guess that most folks aren't gonna be so lucky in that situation. So if that ever occurs with you, get the proper tool to handle a log, like a grapple or a bale spear to handle a bale and carry that low to the ground. Do not go around driving it around with this way up high because you could tip over, it could somehow rock back on you. You gotta use your head. Sinkholes, potholes, stumps, hidden objects, even on familiar terrain. You know, Dale Martin mentioned that in the comment I read earlier, but it was very prevalent throughout all of the comments. Folks that have been on the same ground for years and years, maybe their whole life, where there's a, a spring washout that happens every year. And you know, they mark it with a big stake so that they know where it is in case 
you know, it's just a, a memory jogger there. Or maybe it's a stump that's hidden in the weeds that you only brush hug a couple times a year. Put a big stake out there, spray paint it orange, put a flag on it, whatever you gotta do if you can't get the stump out in time. But you wanna mark your hazards, you know? We mowed this 12 acre field out here a couple of weeks ago for the first time and you have to be extra cautious when you're mowing new ground. Fortunately, we didn't run into any major snafus besides the tractor overheating, that's another topic, but it might seem like a, a pain to deal with, to hop out of the tractor, to find something to flag it, to make a special trip out to, to mark a location that's problematic for washouts every spring, but you gotta do something to have safety in the front of your mind and taking a couple extra minutes, maybe even a half hour worth of time to drive back to the, the back 40 there to mark it for next year, it's gonna be worth the hassle in the long run. So this next one has happened to me, but not nearly the extent that has happened to this other gentleman that commented about it. And we've talked about loose clothing as it relates to a PTO in the last video. So if you have your PTO on and a PTO shaft that's tied in and you reach down to maybe pull some debris out of the way or something else while it's spinning, your sleeve or your glove could get tangled in and that's just bad news. It's a disaster waiting to happen. And so I have had a piece of loose clothing like the bottom of a shirt or a sweatshirt or a coat get tied onto or hooked around a loader joystick before while trying to hop on and off. So we'll find the comment and post it, but I think what he had going on was the tractor was on, he was done trenching or digging where he was at, and he was gonna um, pick everything up and move it around to a different location. He had put the backhoe bucket on the ground and went to hop off. His shirt or his coat was snagged around one of the controls while the machine was on, and so it wanted to push or pull one or the other the entire tractor and kind of try to tip it over to the side, whether it was trying to tip it away from him or tip it onto him, I'm not sure. But it was a situation you probably wouldn't even think that would happen, and by the time you realize what's going on, it would be too late. It may look like I'm standing underneath this, but I'm not, and you don't want to either. And while these hydraulics are strong, you never know when something might give a seal or maybe somebody else is around, a kid or a friend, and they just hop in there and start pushing buttons and knobs. Before you know it, everything's come crashing down because these hydraulics will release if they have the chance. Now some equipment, and my skid steer, my 333 has a locking rod that actually you can raise the entire loader up and from the cab, from the operator seat, you can push this rod out so that it's gonna prevent, physically prevent anything from dropping down even if the hydraulic system fails or gives way. And so other equipment will have like steel retainer rods. I know that our Bombalite Mini Skid had that, maybe even our Manitou Telehandler has that, but basically a, a physical brace that would lock in place around the, uh, the rod so that even if the hydraulic system gives way, it physically can't compress any further because there's that retainer rod there holding it up. So for some reason, I've never seen that in the tractor world besides some homemade contraptions. And maybe that's because these loaders do come off a lot easier than like a, a skid steer loader does, for example. But nonetheless, it's something to be completely aware of and it may seem super convenient just to lift it up, get out of the way and get to work. So if you have to work around, bring your loader on down. Okay, so for number five, we're gonna give you five more ways your tractor can kill you. Now these are a pretty low probability. In fact, all of these are a pretty low probability, but you still gotta use your noggin. This one is based on a warning label that comes on the tractor loaders, but you don't wanna use your bucket as a man lift. Now, if you do need to use your loader as a man lift, they actually sell a man lift attachment. I think for a skid steer quick attach and maybe a John Deere quick attach as well, if we can find it, I'll put a link down below. It's pretty cool, I wanted to try one out. However, my bigger problem than just using the man lift itself is finding an operator that I would trust to raise me up and down and keep me level as we're doing that. I'm not sure an operator exists that I would trust my life with. So having a chain or a cable snap on you, which happened to us when we were trying to unstuck the gator there last winter, which is still for sale, by the way. It turns out I'm a really good salesman when it comes to reasons why not to buy a gator. Somebody, please buy this thing. But if you look close in this video, you'll see that we had a winch strap snap on us. So we had weight bags or line dampeners on the winch uh, strap or rope that we had so that instead of when that thing breaks and snaps, all the momentum doesn't come flying back at you, the weight's just gonna bring it down to the ground. A couple folks mentioned in the last video, actually, and it's kind of ironic because this ROPS bar is here to protect you, but they had a situation when they were going underneath a tree or maybe it was a cable, could be anything, I suppose, and you don't realize that this is up or gonna interfere and you're going too fast and the limb or the cable catches this and wants to rock you all the way backwards and tip you over. So while this ROPS bar is meant to keep you safe, there is some caution that needs to be taken. So crush hazards or fall hazards, you know, we have to take out this tree that you can see, some are right here, way back there. And 
we're gonna have to get an excavator around there maybe. And so whether you're working in the woods, you know, you've seen some videos with maybe silos that are coming down or a tree work that's coming down and maybe you have widow makers that fall or the entire structure collapses. You have to be really aware of what's going on. There was a gentleman that had a comment in the last video that said that he was trying to push over some trees and you know, these were live trees, not huge trees, but he was using his bucket. And as he was pushing them over, the bucket kind of slid off of the trees. They didn't break and they came almost like spring loaded right back at him. So you never know where danger is lurking, just be aware. Now this next one is probably the most serious of all. So don't you guys dare leave your receipts for your tractor stuff on the counter. You better hide the steak knives or you're gonna wind up on an episode of Dateline or 2020 because your wife's gonna kill you. Well, that's gonna wrap it up. If you haven't checked out the previous top five ways your tractor can kill you, make sure you check it out. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you know something else that all of us tractor owners should be aware of, leave a comment down below. If you did enjoy the video, safely press the like button. Hit subscribe if you wanna see more and make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Thanks again for taking the time to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.